Welcome to 101. I'm Greg Bassett, your host from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper. It's a big day here at PAC-14. We have a newsmaker in the house, our Wicomico County Director of Administration, Bunky Luffman. Welcome, sir. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to be here. So you've been a friend for a long time. I know you, but I feel like the citizens of Wicomico County are just getting to know Bunky Luffman. So tell us, who is Bunky Luffman? So I, I think sort of in the public arena, um, I was on the town council in Del Mar and then uh, our town commission when now Delegate Anderton was the mayor. We served together there. I was on uh, chairman of planning and zoning for Delmar, Maryland, Delmar, Delaware. Um, I resigned that position and then became deputy mayor. I resigned that position to go to Governor Hogan's administration. So I was the Eastern Shore plus Hartford. So nine counties wasn't enough. They gave me a 10 county <laughs> area. So I had uh, went to county council meetings. I had uh, about 60 municipalities, uh, you know, town council meetings, county council meetings, that kind of thing. And you know, drove all over the place. And I remember when, when Mayor Day was sort of working with, or now Secretary Day, was working, um, I think, Eastern Shore Land Conservancy or something. And he, me and him talked about the drive. And I was like, yeah, I was like, I'm driving all over the place now. And of course, that had been years prior. So we just talked about that some. But then um, after that, I jumped to the Hogan reelection campaign, worked briefly um, for Congressman Harris, and then went back to the state and uh, worked for Secretary Hathaway Riccio, which was, which was amazing. The uh, uh, she was incredible, and I really, I've been really blessed. Um, and I skipped over one. I worked for Delegate Anderton, <laughs> so, okay. who, who I'm sure will be watching this and will <laughs> ruin me for doing that. Um, but I've been really fortunate because I, I got to work for Delegate Anderton, Governor Hogan and Secretary Hathaway Riccio, and especially, and not that I'm picking any favorites, but the last one was really key because I was on her executive staff and I got to see her making decisions. And I remember I told a new hire, I had, I had moved from senior advisor over to legislative director and there was a new hire taking my spot. And I told her one of her first days, I was like, listen, I said, I'll tell you the first day I had a meeting with the secretary, we had like five different meetings in a row. And one's, you know, on oysters, one's on crabs, one's on, you know, stream uh, restoration, just different things. And we have scientists in the room that are on staff, some of them from the private sector or whatever. And I left every one of those five meetings. And I had known the secretary for 10 years, but never in that capacity. And I was like, she was the smartest person on every issue in every room, the best prepared. And honestly, I got really nervous. Oh, how am I gonna work for someone this talented and this smart? But she's gracious and was a great mentor. and and. Honestly, I don't think, I lean on that, all those experience, but the experience with her specifically a lot, because I got to see her, she gave me incredible access to see how she made decisions and even stuff like how you file emails, because that can be a thing, and how, sure. you, how you just take care of the day-to-day, -day. and so I was really incredibly blessed to do that and work closely with her for three and a half years. I did have to drive back and forth to Annapolis Monday through Friday, so there was a bit of a repentance in there, you know, but... Well, we all knew Great. Jeannie from when she was our delegate in District 37, and um, you know, very familiar. And the the role as Secretary of Natural Resources seemed natural for her, mm -hmm. but that's where you first came to my attention because I would see her leaning on you for stuff, either at public events or certainly up in the legislature. She really relied on Bunky Luffman to help steer her through these processes, even as good as she was. Well, that's that's kind of you to say. I mean, she. Uh... She's incredible, and of course, with an agency that large and that many things, you know, one person can only go so far. So yeah, I was incredibly blessed that, that she allowed me to, to do some things. One of the things I did when I was first there was, um, she with it, and she's still there, there was an incredible person at DNR named Emily Wilson, who's the liaison to the Board of Public Works, and program open space and a ton of different things. DNR is the largest landholder in Maryland. All, a lot of that stuff goes through Board of Public Works. So she sort of made me a junior member of that team to Emily, who was great. And so I got to see the governor, the comptroller, and the treasurer, you know, at every Board of Public Works meeting. So that gave me a big education on procurement, procurement law. Sometimes the procurements are protested. Of course, you know, sometimes there's some uh, back and forth between, you know, the members or the members and um, whichever state agency is doing something they don't like. So that was a big education too. 
So then we flash forward to 2022, Julie Giordano, the Republicans running for uh, county executive in Wicomico. And right before election day, in what I thought was a real masterstroke in terms of politics, she announces that Bunky Luffman is going to be the chief administration, uh, chief administrator of, officer for the county, the person who runs the county government essentially, um, if she's elected. How did that happen? So th this is so we had we had met you know before, but we didn't really know each other that well. And you know, I was friends and still am with with Secretary Schultz, who is running the Republican primary. And of course, she was backing um, Delegate Dan Cox at the time in the primary. And um, my experience on that, so, and I wasn't doing a lot of campaign. It was just, you know, I, I'm back in Kelly. I think I, I may have knocked on a few hundred doors, but I didn't do a lot. I wasn't involved in her campaign really. But, uh, but sort of when she wanted to talk to me, what I was thinking, oh, uh, she's going to try to convert me. And I've known, I've known Kelly for ten years. You know, I'm not close friends with her, but I'm friends with her, and I, uh, I'm, I'm not going to be swayed here. So, like, as soon as I sat down, I was like, "Listen, I know you're supporting Dan Cox. You know, you can support who you want. I'm supporting Kelly." So, I, I don't know what the conversation. And she was like, "No, I don't care. Support who you want." And I was like, "Oh, okay." And that put me at ease. And then we just started going through county issues, and then we had a series of meetings where we just went through a lot of county things and things that you know could be done better and that kind of thing and yeah so there was a there was a period where we talked uh, several times before she did it and it was right right before the primary but yeah there there was I, I can't remember if you were the one but someone said in an unprecedented move you know unprecedented yeah, yeah. never happened never would have thought that it could happen yeah. and it gave her some legitimacy that she needed because people weren't sure what she was going to be like but you're mm -hmm. a solid serious guy and everyone knew okay if Bunky's going to be in there that makes us feel better well, I appreciate that. I take that as a has as that a been huge the feedback, compliment. or am I just making no, that up? <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. And I think I think our personalities, you know, are not the same at all. But I'm more stoic. I mean, the the two entities or, or what have you, two things I'm inspired by in life philosophically, are, of course, the Bible and faith. But also, I stoicism, but specifically Marcus Aurelius. You know, the, uh, his meditations. I read every year. I go through it. So sort of this stoic guy who's based in faith and a little, um, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm shy, but I'm not as out, outspoken in that, certainly not as outgoing as like her, the governor, or, uh, you know, Delegate Anderson. Right. right. <laughs> so, right. so, and I remember at one point when I was going through sort of where is my career going, I, I believe I was still Deputy Mayor of Delmar, and I was like, do I really want to stay on the elected side and see if I want to run for something and I decided I didn't I thought that my talents were best in staff and and that kind of thing and that's why um, when I when Delegate Antrim was elected and that's why I jumped from being a water operator for the city of Salisbury and previously I had been wastewater operator um, to work for him and I took a pay cut I, I think I was making 34,000 a year as a legislative aide but it was specifically because I had decided I want a career change to go to staff side, and it was. Uh, I'm glad I. I'm glad I did that because I. I liked working in Corey Cameron's great over there. Uh, little, uh, you know, my my wife is the superintendent of Salisbury Wastewater right, Plant, so right. obviously she's great, right. you know. And I believe Trey, um, Ron Clapper is doing the water plant now, and and you know they're all really good people. I love my time at Salisbury, but I was. I'm really happy that I made that decision, and I got an education you know, through working two years with Delegate Anderson. And there's things that he does that really can't be taught. <laughs> they have to be caught. Right. And really, they have to be seen. Just the way he's able to work um, with different people. And there's uh, there was one time, and I don't know if he's ever told this story, but there was a bill one time where there was a lobbyist who wanted to kill this bill and a, a local business owner, and they were arguing in his office. And I'm not in the office. I'm at, outside. But how the story goes is, they're arguing, and he looks down, and he looks up and says, "God help me," you know. <laughs> and then he looks down, and first things he sees is one of their socks, and they were brightly colored, whatever the deal. And they're arguing, and he's like, "Hey, where'd you get those socks?" And everybody's like, "What is he talking about?" <laughs> but it totally. And then he talked about the socks. He's like, "I'm gonna have to get me a pair of those socks." And they laugh, and he gets them laughing a little bit. He goes, "Okay, let's revisit this issue," yeah. and it totally reset the conversation, and they worked the bill out. Yeah. And the bill passed. And that's stuff that 
you can't teach. And it's something that honestly I wouldn't believe had I not heard it. Um, cause I heard, I was on the outside of the door and I heard, <laughs> you know, I heard the, I heard the, the yelling and then I heard the people laugh and then he came out and told us what just happened. You know, it's just, there's amazing things like that. And that's the, that's only seems to happen with Delegate Hendricks right. and that sort of thing. Right. So as director of administration, you're in charge of all the employees of the county government. There's more than a thousand of those people. Plus you have to prepare the budget uh, every year and you oversee the, the executive's cabinet, all those people report to you. Big job, Bunky. Absolutely, <laughs> and, and I know, um, I, I think this happened closed session, so I can't say who it was, but there was one, one of the council people said, this is going to be a stretch position for you. And they're absolutely correct. It is absolutely a stretch position. But, I but what prepared me and going why, why the, um, Secretary Hathaway is on my mind is that was such a stretch position for me. So in a way, doing working for you know working for Delegate Anderton after being water operator. So every one of my last several gigs have been stretch positions. So right. there's sort of a when you take on a position and you know, on day one I need to learn more as quickly as possible. And there is some stress that comes with that, of course. And you want to do the best job you can. And I'm glad that this job isn't the first time I felt that way because you're like because I can rely on hey I, I went through the same experience before in several previous jobs so it's absolutely job and the best thing we can do for ourselves just me the county the executive is hire the very best um, department heads who hire the best supervisors and hire the best people that's that's what we have so we have to rely on there was one time we were talking about it um, I think right I think in November December and you said uh, so what do you know about running an airport? And I said, Tony Rudy knows everything about running an airport. <laughs> right. You know? right. So, so you just have to rely on the experts and, and be comfortable with delegating you know, responsibility. I think Pam Olin does a great job in finance. Uh, as someone who's dealt with a lot of controllers in the corporate sense, there's different kinds of finance people. And there's the kinds that help you make money. And there's the kinds that are gotcha accountants. And she seems to have both wheels on the road in terms of that. She's able to hold people accountable, but she's got a strategic vision for what the county needs to do with its dollars. Absolutely. And I, I was at the city, and we didn't work together because I was a water and wastewater operator, but I was at the city when she was at the city. And I remember watching city council meetings with her and, and telling, I don't know if it was my girlfriend or wife at the time, but telling her, like, man, Pam is really sharp. And right. then I found out she was a Wharton School of Business graduate, right. you know. And so sort of after the general election, and this is not denigrated any other department heads, I just didn't know them as well. Um, I told my advice to then um, executive elect Giordano was, you have to keep Pam Olin and Steve Miller. Yeah. <laughs> because those were the two that I, was, that I knew I was familiar with, of course at DNR working on program open space stuff. I got to work with Miller a little bit in the staff. And just Pamela, I had seen her for several years. And so thankfully, they agreed to, you know, stay on. And, yeah, so. I mean, I've been covering the county for 40 years. And Steve Miller is, is probably the most solid person that I've ever worked with. And his, his uh, portfolio, if you will, of all the things he does is tremendous. It's not just the Civic Center. It's not just parks. There's tourism. And there's all kinds of things that goes into what he does. And, and as director of administration, with everything you outlined, I do... I don't know how Steve does that. Right. Like, he's just incredible. So you come into the county government, you probably thought maybe you had some clue about how things were going in the county government, um, and then you get in there, and usually it's not at all what you thought it was. Was that the case with you? Yeah, yeah, there's, there are things that, you know, you just have to kind of experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, some things are that, you know, there's urgent decisions sometimes you have to make that come up immediately, and... You know, the, the, one of the things that's sort of different than I thought it would be is I've known uh, six, I believe six of the seven council people for years, you know, some of them several years. James Wynn's the only one I really haven't known that long. I've known him maybe a year. Um, so um, so the, the dynamic there is different than what I thought it was going to be. The council president, uh, Cannon, was on the, we had a transition team that met three or four times, not a lot, but he was on that. So that dynamic has obviously shifted and I, I was really, you know, surprised by that, but. Yeah. There's a lot of tension going on right now. And I have some people ask me, this comes up every now and then when there is a, tentious, a contentious case, it happened a lot with Bob Culver. 
Well, they'll say, do we really need a county executive form of government? That, that happens. Give me your pitch for why we, we need, why the county executive form of government is best for our county. Well, I just think that the jobs that we do and how big our county is and how big the budget is, how many employees we have, really does need an office and an executive at the top to make those daily decisions. Because, like I said, things come up. You know, the ferry's down. Uh, will you uh, agree to an emergency procurement of X amount? You know, and you just have to be there and do that. And, and not to mention, it's really important in Annapolis. The county executives, regardless of party, when they show up in Annapolis and they show up to testify and they show up just to meet delegates, whether they're in the county or not, that's a big deal. And, and that the respect that the General Assembly and the governor has for the county executive role is, can't be replicated. It just, it just can't be. It's a huge asset for us. You know, Governor Moore reached out to the county executive when we had that unfortunate shooting. Yeah. Um, these are things we and we've met with the governor multiple times. We had him at the airport to talk about our vision and the, uh, the school out there, the AMT school and where we're headed and where we're going and told him we'd be asking for money, you know, so to get that pitch in. So those things are all um, assets or all um, positives to our community that in part are brought back because we have a central figure that the players in the budget and things like that can go to for things. Now, I mentioned the contention, and it seems to me that the contention that's been public, at least, has all been over these hiring decisions. So mm -hmm. early on when the budget was being formed, uh, there was a PIO position and a legislative position that the council didn't want to fund. There was the issue of hiring the outside um, legal counsel to negotiate the police uh, contract. Uh, she wanted Dan Cox. That that didn't fly. And now most recently, there's been the appointment process with the person who's your right-hand man, mm -hmm. um, uh, Matt Leisel is his name. Yeah. Um, he's been appointed by her, but the council hasn't approved. There's also an issue with Public Works, which has been a three-year problem. But explain to me what's going on and what the, the county executive's position is on all this. So there's... So in the charter, it talks about the appointment process, and these really are two sort of separate yeah, cases. Yeah, very separate. So with the assistant director of administration, um, our view is we presented him as our candidate. We gave them job description. We gave them resume, and then they went in a closed session and, and interviewed him. And then um, they told us there's no con we can't reach a consensus on whether to move forward. We're, we're not sure we like the guy. Yeah. He's probably a great guy, but we're not sure he's the right guy for the job. Yeah. So okay. what the charter says is they have 45 days to act in legislative session, vote him up or vote him down. And after that, the appointment stands. They did not act. And so we, we kept waiting, okay, when's this going to be on the agenda? When they're, and they didn't act. So And we didn't do it on the 45th day, but, but eventually she said, okay, they didn't act. It's the job's his, so called him up. Hey, they didn't act. They did not officially turn you down. Um, our reading, and we had we had talked to the county attorney. Paul Wilbur's not just the county executive attorney. Right. He's the county attorney. Right. And he agreed with our reading. He gave an opinion on it. Um, and we agree 100% with him. On the other matter... The, well, let me, let me close okay. that one up. Now, their, their point is his name was not formally presented in a legislative session. Yes. But... And, and what I said yesterday at the uh, council meeting is, so we can ask for things from the county council. Hey, we would like this to be an open session. Um, in fact, we did that for the new um, local management board person. Let's right. do this local, let's do this open session and get the appointment done. They changed it to closed session. We have no ability as executive office to compel them to do anything in legislative session. That's why when we read that language and it has a couple of commas in it, what, which which is modifying which word? Gotcha. That, yeah. You know that kind of thing. There's even a comma that's in dispute. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's almost like the Second Amendment type right, thing. Right. Right. But so, so our reading of the legislative session is that's inherently talking about the county council, not the executive, because we literally cannot force them to do something in a legislative session. They have the power to do it. So. Okay, now tell me about public works. So with public works... Hey, well, um, let me just say real quick, public works has been an issue because we haven't had a public works director in almost four years. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been a huge issue. On the campaign trail, Julie Giordano made a big stink out of the fact that we didn't have a public works director. Mm -hmm. Now she's in and she's struggling to hire a public works director. At least that's how it looks to me that yeah. she's struggling, but go ahead. Yeah. Well, and, and this 
to to why well, I'm thinking of it to get off on that, and this is not to denigrate anyone or or the council, but we have talked to five engineers about that position, like ready to give them a job offer. Every one of them said they did not want to go through the council confirmation. Right. right. Um, I don't. As engineers, I, academic type people, I would assume they probably looked at previous ones. I don't know, right. but. There was one individual that she even said, name your price and I will try to get that through the council. And the person said, no, just not because yeah. they don't want to go through. So we even had a conversation with the council president said, hey, could we just take this position and it not be this confirmation project? You know, maybe maybe for this one, we'll work with you. We'll say this is the name. And then we will, you know, appoint it. But then from then on, this is just a merit employee, not confirmation. And uh, he wasn't interested in it. But the thing is why it's partial, it's important anyway. It's over engineering, the landfill roads. It's um, the most important job in the, in the administration probably. It is super yeah. important. Um, but it also, we had a bill passed this session um, on uh, wastewater and water to do a sanitary district the natural fit would be for that to be under public works. Right. Now, there's a potential that maybe eventually it spins off into its own thing, whether in, in myself and Amanda Pollock are sort of having those conversations on what's this now look like. Um, so stay tuned on that one. Right. But it is incredibly important. Um, so we appointed uh, uh, Heather Langford as acting public works director. Same thing, they did an interview, they came back closed session. We don't know if we want to go forward. Um, we had asked for her appointment to be extended as acting, right. not to form. Which you like to do for 90 days? Yeah, okay. and then you have to go and ask them. They didn't want to extend it. Right. Okay, so then we still need someone sort of to look to in public works. So then we appointed her as acting deputy while we start or sure. continue to search. Because someone still needs to answer the phone in public works. Yeah. So why we continue the search for the director and the search is ongoing. I've talked to I talked to our human resources person, Don O'Hare, who's great, about let's let's really drill into can we go to trade associations, those things and they leave no stone unturned. So we were really making a full court push to do that. Um, the council does not have the ability to name anyone acting anything. That is, unless I guess it would maybe be the council administrator, maybe, right. you know, something like that. But they have three employees. The The rest of the employee, they have the internal auditor, um, the council administrator, and then the other office person. I'm sorry, Lynn, I don't remember right. your title. Um, but they can't make an acting, but the executive's office can. So right. so they, they, in one of the resolutions, they voted her down as acting deputy director and it's not even it's not in their wheelhouse they don't right so she's still acting deputy director there's a dispute over that but what this boils down to is there is a dispute over the interpretation of the charter which is sort of the county constitution and what i've said in in council meeting and i firmly believe just we can disagree on this let's let's go to court get clarity because there was also this dispute under county executive culver and Wayne Strasberg tells me that th there's been disputes along these lines ever since there, the there executive. In, in fact, the hiring of the public works director before was because of the instability in the in the county executive's office that no one wanted to come on the on the executive mm. side. And now you're saying it's a situation with the legislative side. Yeah. Well, I think the whole process. I don't right. want to just put it on that. Sure. The whole process is something. If you're an engineer and you're at a local firm and you're like, uh, is it worth you know yeah. is it worth sort of going through that that process and. Look, that process is um, is daunting and can make you nervous. I was nervous going through it, and like I said, I've known most of these council right. people. My name was vetted in the public for you know five months or whatever as someone that was right. going to do it. And even still, I was still nervous going into my closed session. What are, what's going to happen? Am I? And then even after that, am I going to be approved? My wife's like, "Are you going to be approved? Are you going to be looking for a job?" <laughs> like, we'll we'll see. You know? <laughs> but we interviewed, uh, I believe, it was eleven people, including Matt. And honestly, I went, I went to Julie and I was like, listen, I know some of the people we're going to interview. I don't know, like, if I want to pick one of them, I'm just going to need to step back. If you want me not to be in the interviews, I won't be because I do. There might be a conflict here. And she's like, no, come in. And if one of them is your final, let me know. And then I'll make the pick. 
And I didn't know Matt. I mean, most of these 11 candidates were from our area. Matt's from York, Pennsylvania, and he was captain of the York Police Department up there. He, he must have made a big impression. He, he was far and away the best. He, he, so their agency is big enough that they not only have, like, police officers over what you would associate with police work, he also had time over HR, budget, those sort of things as well. So it was really impressive, and it wasn't just, you know, not that this isn't important, but what wasn't only what you would associate with police work. He did the full gamut of stuff, and it was really impressive. Most of the other candidates had an area but not broad experience, and he had broad government experience. How's all this going to end up? In court. And then what happens? So, And I think because of the historic nature of how we've continually had these disputes since we went to executive, I think that the cleanest thing is to go to court, have a judge render, and then everyone knows what the thing is and we can move forward. I understand that there might be some heartburn over that in the community, and I, I do understand it, but I think, you know, it's the time to just let's put this to bed, let's have a judge look at it, and then we can move forward after that. Everyone knows what the deal is with these and will abide by it. Now, one of the things that the county, county attorney, Paul Wilbur, said is, Look, what you should do is come together with the, the charter says what the charter says, but also when that's decided on that verbiage, come together as a council and an executive and make a policy, make some rule that says these are the steps. You know, we give you the resume, you go in the closed session, then you need to do this and you need to do that. Because our reading is our submission is giving you the stuff. You have the power from then on to do whatever you're going to do. And I guess their reading is, we give them the resume and stuff. If they, what, no matter what they do out of their closed session, we are then supposed to a second time give them a submission saying, or, or what have you. Um, I, I, that's why we don't read that in the charter. Right, so. I understand. With all this going on, are you enjoying your job? Absolutely, <laughs> and I, I think yesterday at the council <laughs> meeting, you know, the council meeting was what it was, and, and I made clear, I mean, this is a, this is a I don't want to say, how, this is a, a cerebral dispute. You know, right. this is a, we disagree on language. Because we disagree on language over here doesn't mean we can't do the rest of the, you know, we're still running the government. There's still stuff to do. And that's what I've told every one of those council people. Let's still work together. You know, Laura Hurley, the county council administrator, myself and her, we went to Del Mar together. Right. You know, so we've known right. each other. It's a small place. So we've known each other for a long time, and, and that's, that's what we're doing. So, yes, there is a dispute, and that sort of will catch the eye, and I get it, of residents and news, but we're st we still have this government to run together. And that's why, you know, what I reiterated in the council meeting, like, I'm not angry. There's no anger over here. Yeah. We just disagree on this. Let's go. You know, let's go to dad well, and get him to decide. Well, you, you know, know, I watched it and I was heartened because it was a very good discussion. There, there was a lot of smart things that were said, which is not always the case in that room. Um, a lot of smart things said back and forth to each other. And it was, it was a really stimulating debate, I thought. But I thought, okay, there's damage being caused between all these people with these, this back and forth. But in the end, it seemed like we just, you know, we agreed, disagreed, and we like each other anyway. So it ended on kind of an up note. And I felt kind of encouraged by that. Yeah. Yeah, the, I mean, the work of the people goes on, you know, regardless of this dispute. And this has a this has a time on it. I mean, this is going to be, right. I don't know, hopefully the next several weeks of our life or right. something, and then we'll get past it. And, and then we'll, we'll have the next thing, whatever that's going to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, we have, a lot of, we have a lot of good work to do ahead of us. You know, like I, said, I mentioned the airport before. The airport, yeah. we're really excited about the partnership with UMES out there. That's going to be a gem, and I know Dave Ryan talks that up all over the state you yeah. know, when he talks to people. So, Excellent. How can people get a hold of you if they want to? Uh, so I'm in the county executive's office. My email address is bluffman, Bunky is my first name, B-U-N-K-Y, B-L-U-F-F-M-A-N at wicomicocounty.org, or you can give us a call at 410-548-4801. He's Bunky Luffman. He's the Director of Administration for Wicomico County. We're thrilled he had time to be this here today. Thanks so much, Bunky. Yep, thank you. I'm Greg Basser from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper, another edition of 101 right here on PAC 14.
First Shore Federal is proud to support PAC 14 and one-on-one. -on -one. We'd encourage every business to support PAC 14 and, and pick a program and support it and let's make a difference.